Hi, it's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the TalkPod A36 Plus radio. We'll get to it right after this. The energy you get in the box, you get the owner's manual. There's two ways of powering this radio up and charging it. You have a USB-C to USB-A with a power adapter as well as a cradle, which is permanently fixed to a 110 outlet, belt clip, wrist strap, programming cable, antenna, 1500 milliamp hour battery, and the radio itself. The manual is not overly large. It's pretty well to the point. They give you some pictures on how to install things, tell you what the different items are for on the radio. Specifications, yeah, given my old eyeballs, these are a little difficult to read. I think a larger print would have been better. They do tell you what each menu item is and what its different settings are. And that's pretty much it. There is no CTCSS codes or DCS codes in this manual. Let's take a closer look at the radio. On the left side, you have your push to talk along with two programmable buttons. On the top, you have a third programmable button. You have the indicator light, which will show whether you're transmitting or receiving. Antenna, the power and volume knob. On the right side, is where you put your programming cable or microphones. And on the front, this will access the memory. Also, if you hold it down, That'll get you into VFO or memory mode. This takes you out of the memory, out of the menu, switching from A to B band, and you have your up and down arrow and your usual tin key. Let's take a look at the menu. This is your you have a total of 55 since it starts at zero menu options. For me, Roger Beep off. I don't want to listen to that. And you see how it's flashing red? That's the selection. See how it's there? You have flashing red for off. Transmit power. Squelch level. Three is okay. Keep it at 2.5 for the step. This is your repeater shift if you're positive, negative, or off. Your offset. Receive CTCSS and your transmit CTCSS. This is where you put in your memory channel. This will show you if you want to have the name show up or the frequency or the channel number for channel A and channel B. This is for when you program repeaters and such into the radio. Receive DCS and transmit DCS. And you can scan for a CTCSS code if you don't know what it is. Same with the DCS codes. This is your channel name. You can delete channels, DTMF information, your tone, Vox info, timeout timer, we'll set that for 120 seconds, wide narrow, keeping it wide. These are how you uh, can program from the front end of the radio, you can program the side buttons as well as the top orange button. This is for your light, and we will make sure that it's on all the time. Voice on or off, definitely gonna turn that off. Turn the beep off as well. Menu exit time, that's if you want it to kick you out you can choose how long it'll stay in menu before it uh, puts you back into the radio regular operating mode. Power on message. This is your language choice. How you want to name the radio, I guess, is what this is. This is how you reset it. And this also shows you your firmware whichever version you're using. Right now I'm at 1.19 and I believe there was a 1.20 that just came out the other day. 
And that's all there is to it for the menu. Yeah, on Amazon, the radio is currently going for $59.99. However, they do have a 15% coupon. And again, it shows you that it comes with the programming cable. You get the bell clip, two different ways of charging the battery. And they say it's uh, the product dimensions. It's four and a quarter by 1.1 by 2.05 inches. Weighs a little over a pound. Some of the functions they say it has. Now on the TalkPod website, it's going for the same price. However, you don't get the 15% off like you do on Amazon. You have different things you can order with the radio. But it looks like you're going to have to pay for extra items with this one. If you come over to support, go to firmware software. Right here for 836 Plus Series radios, they have the new... They have a 1.20, which just came out July 24th for a firmware update for the GMRS. Right now, my radio is set to 1.19. As you can see, it's a little difficult to read the screen in direct sunlight. But let's give it a try, see how it does. WJ6F testing, WJ6F testing. Well, it seems to work well. Manage your old end descent to maintain 6,300. Your old end descent to maintain 6,300 to southwest 29. 2952, contact approach on 121.3. Southwest 2952, it's okay. Approach, verify information, uniform. After Disney, we're due speed to 100, your old end descent to maintain 6,300. Disney, 100, your old speed to 6,300. Okay, we're going to program a repeater in using the front end of the radio. It's actually pretty simple to do. First thing you want to do is make sure you are in VFO mode, which we are, and the way you switch in and out of that is by pressing and holding the menu button. First thing we do, put in our frequency, which is 145220. Then you want to go to menu item number four. This is where you choose your direction for the repeater. In this case, we already have it set to minus, which is good. Then you're going to set your offset. We want 0.6. Transmit CTCSS is going to be 103.5. And then the memory channel, I've already chosen memory channel 15 for this. And once you have all that, we'll see if this works. WJ6F testing. And it worked. I'm going to use Chirp to program this radio. First thing you do, come up here to the top left, hit radio. You're going to download from the radio. Choose your COM port, in my case, COM port 4. Choose the vendor. We need to go down to TalkPod. And then it automatically populates the radio you're using. Click OK. And we can get rid of what's in here, clean out some of the things we don't need. You can see here's one of the ones we put in earlier, the Simp National Calling, so we'll go ahead and name that one. We don't have to worry about tone or any of that because it's a simplex. It is FM. We do have it set to high power. Go ahead and name the other one we did, which is the Clara Repeater. You can see we have a negative and then this 0.6. Another simplex we can do is for 440. And since this is a simplex, we don't need to have this in here. Next one we're going to do is down in Costa Mesa, the MESAC repeater. 
put that one at number 10 and its frequency is 147 zero six zero I don't know what happened there and we do need a tone this one is 100 and it automatically populated the direction for the repeater Next one we'll do is Newport Beach, which is 145, 160. And the tone for this one is 156.7. And again, you see how it populated everything for you. Add in another simplex. Hey, once you have everything in that you want, you can go over to settings, and this is where you can set up how the radio actually works. Like your timeout timer, squelch level, we have the three, Vox we're not messing with. Auto backlight, we just have it set to on permanently. How you want the scan to start, and if you want carrier, search or time, we'll go to time. They have a battery save mode memory display and I want frequency on band A and on band or na the name of the on band A and the frequency on band 2 DTMF push to talk delay a lot of these if you've ever used a Baofeng you've seen these obviously we have the beep off we have the voice turned off you have your FM radio so you can use that and you can turn some of these things off so you never have to mess with them for the power on message, they have the logo or voltage. We'll do voltage. Then they have DTMF settings you can do and the ANI codes. Now, once you have everything set up the way you want, go back to radio and upload to radio. And you're all done. Okay, we're going to do a quick power test starting with 446 on low. You'll see that on band A at the top. And we're getting about half a watt. Switch to high power. And we're getting three watts. Now let's go to 146.520. And again on low power. And it's acting kind of wonky. Not sure why it's doing that. Now we'll see what happens when we try it on high power. And we get six watts on high power. Okay, I've got the uh, radio hooked up to a Tiny SA Ultra. Frequency I have it set to is 146.520, and my start is 130 megahertz, stop at 800 megahertz. Have it on low power. And we can see right off the bat between the, at the first harmonic, this is definitely not, not good. It's not where it should be at all. This radio has a lot of potential behind it. I like the fact you can listen to the air bands if you want, which is great for me. I live not too far from LAX as well as John Wayne Airport, plus a few municipals. It has a lot of great features, it's got a good display. However, like I said earlier, in the sunshine, it's not so great. But the big problem is the harmonics. We saw how high the first harmonic was, and that's kind of a non-starter for a lot of people. If the company goes ahead and fixes some of these small issues, I think it'll be a winner of a radio. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these other videos. And again, thanks for watching.